Good morning. Good morning. We're going to share the in the house and on Facebook and online this morning. We're going to go on hold up this morning. We ask Mother Bond that you will give us a song this morning. We ask Brother Facebook to give us some prayer. And then we'll go into our list with Trustee Wu this morning. Mother Bond. for the day is from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 52, verses 7 through 12. And the subject is Stop the Chaos. As we look, as we look at the word chaos, you know, we are familiar with that. We may not have the dictionary name, but we know what it means because it's, it says a state of confusion, disorder. We do know about that. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> so Israel was well acquainted with this, but, uh, uh, but Isaiah tells them things are about to change. And if he starts off, he tells them how beautiful upon the mountain of the feet of the messenger bringing good news of peace and salvation, and telling Zion, your God reigns. Now, <clears throat> the watchmen shall lift up their voices, 
They are out, the lookout people, they are, they're out looking, and they're going to sing together with joy <clears throat> when they see the messenger approaching. For in plain sight, the Lord's return to Zion. And then he said, <clears throat> said go to waste places. Say ye waste places, the places laying in ruin. He said, break forth into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Israel. He told them, it's the time to be rejoicing. Come on, y'all. And, and the Lord has read this his only arm before the eyes of all nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of the Lord. <clears throat> and then he said, the people are told to depart. And they're told to leave Babylon behind. And don't touch any unclean thing. Especially you who carry the vessels of God. And he told them in verse 12, said, You shall not leave in haste, running for your life. The Lord will, you, not, you shall not leave in haste, running for your life. The Lord will go ahead of you, and the God of Israel will be your real God. Now, when we look, we didn't have about six verses, but. It told us a lot. When we look at this, the first thing they did, they were announced good news. And in our lesson today, we said that see that the mountains can be places of quietness and peace. And but they can also <clears throat> they can also be places of security. But in the scripture, many were sacred states, sacred sites. So you see, when you think about that, look how Abraham was to offer his son Isaac on Mount Moriah mm -hmm. until God intervened. Mm -hmm. Moses was called into the service of the Lord at Mount Horeb in front of a burning bush. So many times Jesus used the mountains for teaching the people. Now the beauty of the mountain is connected to the messenger and, and who is described as having, they say, have beautiful feet. Not to say that their feet were attractive or beautiful, but to describe the greatness of their mission. See, those feet were the one, in those days they didn't have other transportation, so those feet was the one that brought the good news. <clears throat> and that's, they were saying how beautiful of the feet upon the mountain. And the announcement, it is a peace, happiness and salvation to a people who have had their share of disappointment and despair. And in this case, the message is that the exile will be returned to Jerusalem. And, and the prophet say, the watchman will be calling out, uh, lifting their voice to the people in the, in the city. When they see God, on the, God or the messenger approaching, they will have the opportunity to see the glory of God. And you see, <clears throat> uh, and then he told them the day of rejoicing. That was the day going to be a day of rejoicing. He said, this is a day of rejoicing, he said, as the messenger encouraged the people to break forth in the in other words, spread out, spread out throughout the city and, and, and the region to broadcast the good news of God's coming. And then he says, uh, mm, you waste places. He's talking about Jerusalem and describing the exile who for, from the city, they had been laid waste. The city that had been laid waste, it's been laid out there, it's in ruin and everything. But he said, wake up, wake that up. And he says that, that uh, mm, those, those people, they were exiled. He was talking about in that city. That they were the exile that had mostly been destroyed on the Babylonian invasion. And the few that was left that he said, wake up. And I said use the term God's holy arm as a source of strength and power. Now, Israel, <clears throat> Israel is, is you know is not permitted to withhold praise. And they told him, said, you supposed to rejoice. You are not even allowed to withhold praise from God. And we are either. We we are, we owe, as the song said, we owe God praise. And Israel is not permitted to withhold his praise from 
from uh, God simply because the condition was not ideal. Uh, but no, regardless of what they was going through, they uh, owe God the praise. Amen. Israel, you know, Israel was called upon to praise God uh, because of who he is and not simply because of the things happening in the present moment. And we are to praise God even in our darkest moment. Mm -hmm. Not, and that, that can be very hard to do. And no matter what, because, because of the fact that God has taken care of us all this time, mm -hmm. he, he looks for, he wants our praise. He wants our attention. He does not share it with anybody else. Whether it's another person or out of God, no, he does not. God wants our total attention. So that's what he wanted from Israel all the time. But he just kept stepping out of, getting out of step. And then we looked down here and said, when God started preparing for departure, he told him, said, uh, God through the prophet said, he's commanding the people to leave that world. And you know, you look at that, that reminds me of the, the other time when God brought them out of Egypt. And we remember when he brought them out, he, um, they had to hurry up and get out. They had, you know, everything was hurt. But here he told them, you ain't got to worry, take your time, take your time. And then when they came out of Egypt with Moses, they, um, they were able to, to get some of the things that the Egyptian had, that gold, silver, even some clothing they was able to bring out of Egypt. But this time, don't bring anything. He says, don't touch any, don't bring any unclean things. And any unclean thing, they were saying anything in Babylon was unclean, so he couldn't bring nothing. So he would tell them, don't, don't bring anything. He said, because you're going to get a chance to, uh, to have a ceremony and praise me. He said, don't put it out. I want you clean. So you don't touch any of those things. And when they came to worship the Lord after leaving the country, and see, unlike the Israelites were in Exodus, they had to rush out. But we, they were told, you didn't have to leave in a hurry. Leave, but leave calmly. You could just step on out and go. Because you didn't have nothing to worry about. You were sure of God leading and giving him protection. And he told them, the nightmare is over. And, and, and you know, when we look at our situation today, you know, there are times <clears throat> when we look for someone, someone with more power than we have, a more right, a more access to stuff, you know, to correct, to right or wrong, correct some injustice, and to ensure fair treatment of all people. And these are uh, the um, Israelites, they thought that. God would send a prophet, or God would send somebody where they really expected the Messiah to come in. Uh, they were looking for them to come in and just kind of wipe out their enemies and uh, make things right for them, uh, easy for them, and they expected to see probably military action. But that is not the way God had it. And sometimes, you know, God has some spokesmen. And, and this time, <clears throat> and, and and we have, we used to, we had people who could uh, speak for us, maybe our senator, maybe or somebody, something we go to them for help when some some unfair thing has happened to us. And it's, you know, it says that uh, it, back in the day, it said many, for many years, there were people like Thurgood Marshall and Walter White who had such position. Uh, who was and held such position for people of color through the NAACP. And then, you know, the League of Victory won by NAACP's expense team, defense team, was brought, you know, through some of the things that happened as a result of those people in position with desegregated schools, uh, voting rights, fair housing, and, and, and a host of other legal changes that made life better for people of color and for society in general. 
we all looking for a champion. They were looking for a champion who could make things right for them. And we have done that in our life all through generations. We, as we turn around, <clears throat> there's always something else going on. We look to people like these, the legal defense team of the NAACP to help us out, to represent us, because we didn't have the access. And indeed, you know, these men and the team that stood behind these men, uh, uh, <clears throat> they were champions for justice, champions of justice. And serving, and serving people who had no voice or no means to get one through their own resources. And then many of the, you know, many of those old champions, they are gone on. But like Israel, we have one, the greatest champion at all, Jesus Christ himself. Amen. He will be with us forever. As long as we, we are here, God is here. Wherever God is, wherever we are, God will be there. Amen. So we don't have these champions of the NAACP defense team now, but we do have the greatest one of all. Mm -hmm. He's the one who knows each one of us. He knows what we can deal with. He knows what we can bear. He knows how we're going to act about certain situations. So he can take care of all of us, mm -hmm. all of us. Uh, we just need to, to hold to his unchanging hand. And, and we don't have to know everything. Just know the one that knows everything. Yeah. He's going to take care of it anyway. That's right. If we try to know everything, that's too much of a stress on us. Mm -hmm. But just know the one who knows everything. And you know, like the songwriter says, says, many things about tomorrow, I don't seem to understand, he said, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. And see, while we're going through all these things, we know who holds our hand. Those believers in Christ, we know who holds our hand. <clears throat> and what we have to do is keep our mind open to him. Keep the connection. Make sure that we stay connected to him. And that way, we won't have to work. And you know, uh, <clears throat> as we talk about the people, the NAACP defense team and all this stuff, uh, they were a great help to us then. It looks like now, when it looks like we're going backwards, uh, we don't have a lot of those strong people around now. It's kind of like our churches here. We had some old deacons and mothers and all. It was a different story then, back then than it is now. But they are going on to their rest. We have to take over. We are responsible for this generation now. God has let us stay here for whatever reason. We don't know. It's not that we're so good that he didn't take us. And it's not that we're so bad he didn't think we were ready. But the thing of it is, God has let us stay here. There's a reason. And if you don't know, like I said, you don't need to know it if you don't know. But you do what you need to do. That's what you do. You do what you know you need to do. If he let you stay here. You don't worry about explaining why. I don't know why he let me stay here so long and all this stuff. No, you don't worry about it. You just know he let you stay here. And you're not here just to, 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 to uh, sit down. There's work to be done. And there's enough work for everybody to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to, when people come to visit our churches, we need to know how to treat them. We need to welcome them. Welcome. We need to uh, pray and, and try hard to get along. It says whatever you do, try to get along. We should always try to get along. And, and we should ask God to show us how to love our fellow man. Show us how to love others. Show us how to not fly off the hammer when something go wrong. Or when you feel, even though you may be right, when, when someone has mistreated you or whatever case you try mine, I don't understand. By all means, live together in peace. We don't have long to stay here. And we don't need to waste that time cutting up. We need to use whatever time we've got. 
to do whatever we can do for the Lord. Because we know time, time is not, not long. Time is not long. You can just look at the seasons, look at the trees, look all, just look at everything. And that tells you something. Mm -hmm. We're nearing the end. Mm -hmm. And even if the end was 25 years from now, some of us ain't going to live 25 more years anyway. Mm -hmm. So your end could come quick. <laughs> so all I'm saying is that just like here, they had been in captivity so long. And some of them feel like they're going to be like that the rest of the life. But my Bible tells me that whatever I'm going through now, it ain't going to be like this forever. That a change is going to come. A change has going to, going to come. So therefore, I've got to keep working them all, keep my, keep my head up, keep my eyes to the sky, keep my eyes on the prize. Because one day, I won't be here to do it. And one thing we can remember, class, just remember, every day, the forecast for every day, our forecast, like the weather forecast, the sun shines and God rains. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you this morning. Thank you for the and like you were saying, where we, we people in the church at home, we first know, need to know how to act. Mm -hmm. And then when our visitor come, they'll see that in us. But if you act up and think you can do this and do that, then those people when they come in, they can they don't say nothing, but they fear, you know, they can mm -hmm. feel for what's mm -hmm. going on. So what we need to do, you know, we can be like uh, like in the in the western and one of my, one of my favorite western is the Lone Ranger. And they say he's for law and order and justice for and justice for everybody. When people see him, they put fear, they put fear in the, the bad people. And he's a blessing to the good people. So we should be to a point that when a person sees us or hear our name called, they look at they know to be favorable to us. Because they know what we are we represent. We are to represent God. Because like if, like I said, you do something bad, and then you, you know, we, you're supposed to be punished for what you do bad. And if I'm looking at them punishing you for what you do bad, that should put fear in me. So I won't do the wrong thing to be bad. We can learn from others' mistakes. That's right. Amen. Are there any other comments? We ought to continue. I think it was to say here earlier, we just talked about uh, as they were coming out of captivity. Uh, captivity. One of the things is uh, not to bring the things to Babylon into their new uh, setting. and after the Lord has moved us to a new place, we, we have a tendency to want some of the things of the old life. You know, the old life contains the works of Jesus Christ, yes, but if the old life contains the ways of the world, we have to understand that we have to set our uh, sights upon Jesus Christ. And, you know, um, some people, uh, the world measures success by different things. I was looking at a, a video of a young lady who gave a, a <clears throat> speech of uh, Victoria at uh, high school, and she talked about uh, uh, the class of uh, what people view as success. Some people view uh, success as, as getting good grades, getting all A's. Some people could view success in being a great athlete, some attaining going to a great college or attending. But she says she measures success by her walk with Jesus Christ. So, yeah, as they would do in the world. <clears throat> so and even the other thing about this too, you know, it's about the world, the world, you know, a lot of the world will tell you, say, I'm not going to wait till I die to, to have my, to see the, see the joy of the, of it all is that God rewards us right.
right here, right now. This is good to have peace of mind, knowing that no matter what comes your way, that all things work together to good of those that love the Lord and call the Lord to His purpose. This is good to know that you have peace when you lay down at night. You're able to sleep at night. Why? Not because of who you are, what you have, but because of whose you are and what God has in store for us. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful joy, a wonderful peace. And we didn't, we didn't, we weren't born and started walking and, and realized this. For well, many of us, it took a period of time and years of walking with the Lord and, and trusting Him and, and reading His Word and, and praying and going through trials and tribulations. But look where the Lord has brought you from. And we ought to be thankful each and every day what God has done for, for, for me. Well, you see, like I said, it's, it's a progression. It's a thing because you learn as you walk with God and you stay with God, you keep that connection going. And then you understand that you're going to suffer in this world. Some things are just going to happen to you. It ain't going to be your fault. Not necessarily, maybe some, I don't know who fault. But I'm just saying, some things you're going to have to deal with in this world. No matter what you do, how saved you are, uh, no matter all that, you're going to have to suffer some of these things. And so once you get that in your mind, you say, okay, if I'm going to reign with God, I know I'm going to suffer some of this stuff. But what I'm saying is, once you get that down path, and you know you're going to suffer. So when it comes upon you, it doesn't hit you so hard. You say, well, I know one thing. If God is with me, he's right in here with me. So, you know, let him carry the load. Yes. He's right here with me. And so I don't need to worry about it. And after a while, you're going to come out of that valley. And the sun's going to shine again. But what I'm saying is, they come, those of us believers in Christ, we're not going to have to worry about that. You know, you don't know what the next minute going to bring. We definitely don't know what this, what this afternoon is going to bring. But I'm just saying, and we can say, whatever it brings, God's in control of it. Let him have it. He saw it coming, I didn't. When you think about it, it means Christ. He suffered and he didn't do anything wrong. And we were born in sin. So we right. do stuff wrong, but he never done nothing wrong. So if he suffered, you know we're going to suffer. That's right. You just got to be real. That's right. But what I'm saying, when we do have to suffer, before we became children of God, we might would have fallen apart. You know what I'm saying? If you some disaster come upon you, it's like, no, what in the world did I do to deserve this? And all that stuff. But now you don't say it. You say, Lord, I know you're going to walk with me in this battle, and I'm going to come out. So, does anyone else have any comments? Uh huh. You know, we just share the, the good news, you know, the love of God, and, you know, and let people know the good news of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is the good news. Yes.
about even the Sunday school lesson. Read through it. Then I said, what did it say? I don't What did it say? You know, it's like it went right by you. And I'm sure some of them, well, maybe not the other ones, but some, some of them has had that same problem. You read a passage, you don't even know what it said. It went right by you. <laughs> you have to read it and read it and read it. And, and you had to pray. You had to pray as God to give you some kind of understanding because you can read all through the whole thing and don't know nothing. <laughs> They call a brother or sister. Have you read this? How do you, how does this relate to you? you know, to uh -huh. understand. Uh, but uh, but God gives us uh, gives us what the tools so that we need if we believe. Yeah. But we also have to spend time with them. I don't mean you know. When I say the prayer, get up and go. You no, know, you have to spend some time. With them. Are there any other comments? Yes, um, good morning, everybody. Enjoyed the message. Um, you touched on many areas that were due to, uh, that's dear to me. Um, you were talking about the NAACP. I joined them back in 1992. Been a life fully, life fully paid member for years. And um, I can um, attest to what you're talking about, uh, what's going on now and what was going on back then. Um, I was, um, it was a bunch of older people. As a matter of fact, I was the youngest one. So they had to give me an office because uh, they thought that would bring young people in. Same with the uh, uh, um, Democratic Party, uh, drawn back in around the um, early 90s as well. And um, like you say, things have changed, people have changed. But for me, it don't have to be, um, like you say, the older people, they, we're still here, so we gotta make sure uh, things continue. I mean, that's the only way. Because these young folks, they got good ideals and stuff, but they haven't experienced it. They don't know what's going going on. So my thing is, people in the church, we got to be bold. We got to say what we mean, mean what we say. Folk are watching us. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you can say things, but it don't mean nothing if you live in some type of way. So, I mean, it shouldn't be that way. But it is. We're people. And, and and when you're talking about um, church, um, I can read all the scriptures, but I don't get the full message until uh, I start to come to Sunday school, Bible study. I mean, that's where you're going to get it because you got the discussion. And I listen to some people talk about their their Bible, their, their Sunday, um, uh, Bible study. They don't even let the people have discussion. Now, I couldn't be there. I mean, because I, I got to have some interaction. That's how I learn. And, and, and see, I, I look at a lot of times that I look at our folk, and when you're talking about accountability, I mean, you know, we we, we got to be held accountable. Tell the truth. You know, if you're a mother, deacon, pastor, saint, whoever, just tell the truth. If you got something to say, say it. Don't beat all around the bush and all that kind of stuff. If, if we're supposed to be bold soldiers, then, then say it. Because I look at you sideways when you... When you're saying things, and, and I know, you know, that you're coming from a different angle. If, if you're a man of God, say what you mean. I mean, you know, why, why, why you, why you got to say something that uh, somebody else said or something like that? And uh, know, know what you're saying for yourself. I mean, and, and, and get all the facts and all that good stuff. We're living in a time now where people want to hear the truth. It might not look like it. Uh, I, I went with the sheriff yesterday to um, to a program at Edgecombe Community College. And... Um, and, and and this young guy was up there. He was like, man, you know, that message was for me. He said, uh, you've done something for me. And uh, people are waiting to hear some good news. Like you say, you say good news. People are waiting to hear the good news. But it's got to be good news. Everything ain't good news. And and, and, and and like I said, people are hurting. And people want to hear. Because I'm, I'm telling you now, I mean, I, I, I go through the week. But I'm waiting to hear the good news on Sunday morning. And, and, and um, you know, I'm. It's just that we, we, we have got to come together. I mean, I like the uh, sheriff said yesterday, you know, we got a lot of issues in the black community and we got to come together. I mean, we got to save us. I think the group yesterday was like the future belongs to us. Well, the future might belong to us, but look at we killing each other. We're doing all kinds of things. Here for the right. So, I mean, you know, we have got to come together and we got to look at things <coughs> different in the black church, in the black community, all aspects of life. 
you know, and, 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 and you know, you can get mad because white folks said something. But if it's the truth, it's the truth. I don't care who said it. Mm -hmm. So we got to come together as the black. Uh, and, and for me, you know, I get on the ministerial lines and rock him out. We got to come together, stuff going on in the school system and all that. The church got to get involved. We got to walk that walk. I mean, we, we got we to lead men. They got to stand up, be bold. And the people first, you have to do, you have to get yourself together. That's get right. yourself in order. Because you can't correct anybody. That's anybody. Right. So, and then when you get yourself together, and then you're going to go out and be a leader or whatever, you need to ask God to whatever I do, give me wisdom. See, a lot of people have, have knowledge, have education, but they don't have any wisdom. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have wisdom, you're going to mess up a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Ask God to give you wisdom to know how to speak and how long to speak, mm -hmm. who to speak to, That's right. and when to speak. So I'm saying, you, you get yourself together, and then another one get their together. If y'all form a league, and you keep adding one to it. After a while, you got a little team, and that little team can go out and help somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's got to start, first of all, within you. Mm -hmm. You got to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. you, got, I mean, you got to ask God, you know, to come in there and take out all that mess that's going to put you in the middle. Get you right. And then you can go. And it don't mean you're going to be perfect, but you can't keep you're on doing the, the same thing that you've always done. Right. Now, i got to see a difference. You you won't be perfect because you are living in an imperfect world. So you, you're not going to be perfect. You're going to make some boo-boos even after that. But the good thing about it is that once you, once you turn it over to the Lord, and he showed you, he'll be your guide. He'll be the one guiding you every day, like what you, should, what you should do, all that stuff. And when you're on your knees, and while you're down there, after you finish your request, just wait a little while, see if he's going to direct you to something. Because, you know, it's a personal thing. I have to get mine right, you have to get yours right, and we all have to get it right. But like I said, if we're going to be a leader or something, we're going to ask God for wisdom. Because <clears throat> some things that are said, even in the church, I'm not going to say it. Some songs that sing, every song that you sing in church is not necessarily for God. You know, and I look at some of the, you listen to some of the stuff, it's like, what in the world? It ain't, maybe I'm old fashioned because I'm used to the hymns from the hymn book. Pass me not, no type things. But some of the stuff I hear, I couldn't have it. Uh, it. It just don't sit right with me. And I don't know if it's just me or whether it's, it's for sure. But I'm just saying, you got to know. You got to know how to divide stuff. You got to realize this ain't us. This ain't, this is not for me. And the Holy Spirit will tell you a lot of things. You'll feel uneasy for a long time because. You just felt like that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And so, are there any other comments from anybody? Yes, and then now you just said, if you make a boo-boo, like I said, if I go to you or you make a boo-boo to somebody, and then what, what we should do, go to God and ask them to forgive you, and then have the guts to go to that person and ask that person, will you forgive them? But some people let pride stand in their way. They never will say, I'm sorry, or even, will you forgive me? But we, that's the thing we got. Them little things for add up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what we got to do. Put pride behind it. Mm -hmm. I do something to you. I should be have good enough. I should have good enough. But go to God. Ask God to forgive. Then go to you. And ask you to forgive me. And I ask you and you don't respond, then I done done what I should supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and, and my hand will be clean. And if I'm the person I should be, if you don't ever come to me and ask and forgiveness, I'll let you and God have a day. Because that's right. one on your book, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's the thing. I, I, I don't care what people do to me. I ain't going to be mad with nobody. 
I'm 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 address it, but I'm not gonna bad, be mad with anybody. And then on, on on Wednesday night, I hate that um a lot of time we give out of time. I be on and be wanting to say something, but time don't allow. So just because I don't say nothing, don't mean I ain't got something to say. Matter of fact, I be taking notes to say I'm gonna mm -hmm. say it the next week, mm -hmm. and don't get a chance to do it that week because I'm listening to the conversations. Cause see, I could. But in, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm listening and learning. Oh, no, I'm so on on Wednesday yeah. night, just because I don't say nothing, ain't because I ain't listening, yeah. uh, and and stuff and, and and everything. But also, I I listen a lot of times. We talking about God did this, God did that. But I I'm having a hard problem with. Sometimes I think people forget that God works through us. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, He did it, but He does it through people, mm -hmm. and we got to understand that. I mean, if somebody come up. Uh, Sunday morning, join church. Uh, the preacher was up there. Well, I think God did it through the preacher. So we got to understand sometimes that we, we can't just say he just did it. He working through us, doctors mm -hmm. and everybody. Yeah. I think a lot of times we leave that out. You know, we, we need to make sure that we understand that part. Yeah. And we are his instruments. We are his instruments that he uses. Like this side. So if there are any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson. Lord, thank you for trusting you this morning for the good Sunday school lesson this morning. Uh, we are here from the youth now. On the top of this morning, we're going to look at the verses for Sega. Came to Genesis chapter 37, verses 12 through 32, and learn that. Sometimes jealousy and stuff that causes people harm and hurt. And we're learning that it's going to be a blessing for Joseph in the end. So we got to learn how to, even though people get jealous and what causes you hurt and harm, leave it in God's hand because it's going to be a stepping stone or a blessing for you later on. Amen. So that's what we learned this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, somebody from the uh, Adult class, what did you get out of the lesson this morning? Anyone? Amen. 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 Amen.